All right, and this lecture is about functional calculus and its cap uh, applications. And the word calculus here is not differential calculus, it's in something like calculating calculus. So, so let's start with the corollary. If two polynomials such that they agree on the spectrum of t, then they are the same in terms of q of t is equal to r of t. Because q of t gives you this, which is equal to r of this, right, h q on the i. They agree on the spectrum, it's r of t. So, now we can define what we call uh, functional calculus. Given the self-adjoint operator, and we're given it the spectrum, let f be the function, real value function from the spectrum, from r to r, basically, from sort of t to r. We define f the function of the operator. Basically, for any polynomial such that for Q, polynomial, such that Q of lambda j is to be the f of lambda j, right? This is such polynomial exists by Lagrange interpolation. And when we define f of the, the operator is really just the polynomial Q of, of the operator. So such Q exists by Lagrange interpolation and above curly makes ft well defined. And we see that ft is really equal to this. Right, because q, right, f t is equal to q of t, if q of t is equal to this, but q and f are the same, so they, they become the same. So, the mapping is called the functional calculus. It takes f to f of t. It takes a function to the operator. It's called a functional calculus. Okay. All right. So here's some properties, some proposition. And those three, right, f of f plus g of t gives you f of t plus g of t. So this is some um, algebra homom no sorry. Yes, algebraic homomorphisms. Right. Some algebraic homomorphisms. Because this is an operator, and this is addition and operator, but this is addition and function. This is scalar multiplication and uh, function, and this is scalar multiplication of operators. And this is multiplication between two functions. And this is the multiplication between operators. Right? Yes. So, the identity function, also we have the identity function. The functional calculus is equal to t and the constant one function that takes all out of one the one function the cal functional calculus gives you the identity uh linear map identity linear map okay and also ft is self-adjoint and uh, this i think it should be clear enough because this is from this definition we take this Right, and those projections, so they're self adjoint. So now we, we just, to prove it, we just check the multiplication. So ft is this, gt is this, right? The ft times gt gives you this. And pipj cancel out, right? F gamma i, g gamma i, which is f times g of t, right? By the definition. And also the identity, right? Is equal to this, which is equal to t, right? from from last lecture or from above, right? from right. I think I don't even need to mention this. Right? This is just equal to t, and the constant one function, right, gives you the identity map. And yes, they're self-adjoint. So here comes the first question. So let's just read this question real quick, right? You can pause and take a look at this question. And part A, right, we just define it again, right? Give it a self-adjoint operator, the spectrum of t. Let f be a function. We define f of t as a polynomial that mimics the function output at the spectrums. And then we define f of t is really just the polynomial with the input t. And to show that, we want to show that, we want to show this is true, right? Okay, so to show this, 
first because lambda is a spectrum right well a spectrum so um lambda is, must be equal to lambda k for some k right okay so we're given this right we're given this we're given this then this is the definition of t, and this is a lambda k times the identity mapping, right? Okay, so um, uh, we move it there, right? We can regroup them, and we can do the norm squared. We do the norm squared, it gives you zero, which means that other than the gamma k, all the thing else is positive because they're distinct, right? So this really requires this, right? And now we have f of t, right? Well, we want to calculate f of t of x is equal to f of lambda of x, f t of x is equal to lambda x, f of t of x is f of lambda of x, right? So now we do the cal calculation here. f of lambda of x is this. So again, we do their difference. We do the difference and we do the norm squared, right? We do the norm squared and gives you zero as the as desired so here's the proposition now give it a self adjoint operator such that we give it a spectrum and it will let r be f of t then the spectrum of this so the spectrum of this new operator is really just f of the spectrum of this which is f of gamma one to f of gamma n. okay and two part two uh, will be omitted Okay, will be omitted because notation wise is too hard to keep track. But uh, the idea is not that hard. Okay, so only prove one and we assume that two is true and we have two. Okay, so one, we show this. But this is by the Q1 we just did, right? What we just did is basically Q1. f of lambda is an f of spec spectrum of t right and this s x is f of lambda of x for some for some x right so lambda is in the spectrum of f of t in our case we write it as r right so this is really by the question one we just did and for this direction, well, we see this trick also once, um, once again. We write R as this. So for a lambda is spectrum of R, right? The spectrum of R, R minus gamma I, lambda I gives you this. So we suppose that it is not a spectrum, then those quantities will all non-zero. And we can, again, we get this is invertible, right? So now we, we, we shift our viewpoints to matrices. So from now on, we fix V is equal to Rm with Euclidean inner product. And for A matrix, we consider the left multiplication operator, right? And the spectrum of A defined as the spectrum of this operator LA. And we have this is true, okay? This is true by the one we just proved a long time ago. Right. We pick A to be symmetric such that A is equal to AT. If A is symmetric, the AT will be equal to A. So LA is a self adjoint. So we pick A symmetric, so LA will be self adjoint. Okay, so, so the definition of a polynomial of a matrix, like if a polynomial QT, the Q of A is really just this, where A is the matrix. So here, the power is the matrix multiplication power here. Okay, so the context, is, I hope, is clear enough. So the lemma is that, okay, if A is symmetric, we consider, we can diagonalize it, right? We, we did this in the lecture of the real spectral theorem, where this is orthogonal, orthogonal diagonalizable, right? And D consists of the eigenvalues and the u's are the 
eigenvectors, right? Eigenvectors. Okay. Then we see that a to the k is really just gamma one gamma n to the k, and this again by the induction. It's really easy. Okay. In the same framework, we can extend this to polynomials, and the proof is again easy. Moreover, we can write, we can do the same thing, the functional calculus, right? Given a symmetric such that, right, if they agree on the spectrum of the matrix, then they're the same. Now we define the functional calculus on the matrix. Define FA as a polynomial such that it mimics the function output at gamma j's and we define fa as the polynomial of a which is well defined by corollary so f of a will be this right. moreover if a b and b a are commuting symmetric commuting operators right then there exists lambda one lambda prime one to lambda m such that they have a common uh, diagonaliz diagonalization uh, matrix and this is really just by the question 4 which is did from last lecture let me scroll it down to this one right and to do this to do this all we have to do is we shift our viewpoint to matrices to the left multiplication operator and we just work with the operators and we apply back Right. It is not really that hard. Okay. Now, let's revisit the positive operator. We talked about this two lectures ago, right? Positive operators. So we're going to define the positive operators in terms of, in the viewpoint of functional calculus. So given T self a joint, I mean the spectrum of T, right, we can decompose this such that there are project, uh, projections that are orthogonal, and i is the sum of pi's, right? And then we have this formula. We have this formula. And the proof is straightforward, right? The proof is straightforward. We just compute this inner product and it's straightforward, so. Okay, so with this formula, as you can see, the definition of the positive is like something this greater than zero. But those are on non-zero. So if this this will implies that all the gamma chase will be non-negative, right? So here, as you suspect, incorrect, you're correct. The following equivalent, the spectrum of T is non-negative if only if we have this is, right. If T satisfies one, we call T a positive operator. Alright. So one implies two is by the lemma, right? By the lemma, if they're on non-negative, then this entire thing will be non-negative, right? And for the converse, if gamma is in the spectrum of T, we want to show gamma is non-negative, but we did this before, right? So with the same notation, if we require this is strictly positive for non-zero vectors, we say T is a strictly positive operator, and the spectrum should be all uh, positive and from here you can see that positive operators are invertible right yeah this is positive invertible correct so we define the square root of a uh, operator we are defined on the spectrum and the function is the square root function on r first we require it to be positive right like this is like really similar to the case of real numbers we can only take square root of positive numbers and and the square root of negative number is not is not a real number anymore right and from here we define the square root of operator if this operator is positive operator okay so this is where the terminology came from right and we define this function the square root function as square root function of t the functional calculus we would define this as the square root of t. So let's see what's the difference. The difference is that they have no difference. They're, they're the same thing. So here's the proposition. If t is self-adjoint and there exists a positive operator, okay, t is also positive. t positive. Okay. 
if there is another positive such that r of r. So this is r, r. So r of r is equal to t, right? This is the composition in term in composition squared, right? The multiplication on the algebra of operators. Then r will be equal to square root of t, the functional def the functional calculus definition. First, t and r commutes, right? Because t equals r squared. And second of all, r t and t r commutes because this is true, right? For any function, because this is really just a polynomial, right? Like this is really a polynomial of t, and we see before that if they commute, then any polynomial commute, right? So now they commute, so we can find a common O and B, right? Common orthonormal bases, eigen, there are also eigenvalues, eigenvectors, right? And the alpha i for the square root of t, beta i for the r. Now, we show that all the uh, alpha i and beta i are the same. Because alpha i is a spectrum of this. So alpha i will be non-negative. Beta i, the same thing, right? Because we assume that r is positive, right? The same thing, right? Because okay, because t is positive, so the square root of the is the square root of the spectrum of t, which is again positive, not um, non-negative. So I think this part is I don't need to explain that much. It suffices to check the square of the same, but squares. T is equal to r of r psi i, which is r of beta i psi i, which is beta squared psi i, and t of psi i is equal to square root of t squared psi so here where the function g takes x sorry we have a function f that takes a rule number to square root and we have a function g that takes x to x squared and f of g of t right which is equal to t right we take a square root and square root by where we square it and then we take square root they're the same they're the same, right? The same function. So t was equal to square root of t squared, which is, we have um, the spectrum of this, then t of psi i, again, by our, by our question one, right from the very beginning, t of psi i will be this group, which is alpha i squared psi i, right? So this is the functional, as I noted, here is the operator square, and here is the functional calculus square. So, R and T, they agree on the basis, so they're the same. So they're the same. Right. So here, we see that Our definition of operator coincides, right? We origin so originally defined operator such that if we have this, so r will be equal to square root of t. So this one, but this is square root of t to definition two, which is f of t, where f is the square root function, and these two are the same, right? Because by this proposition, by this proposition, right? So we can interpret it, the square root of an operator as the square root, the functional calculus square root. We just square root all the spectrum. Okay. So here's the last question. We related to the exponential function. And the, the exponential function, this question states that if they commute, then we have this formula. Conversely, we want to prove this is either true or false. And spoiler alert, this is true, okay? And the proof, um, I'll let you to figure it out, 
Okay, I'll stop here for five seconds for you to take a screenshot if you want. Okay. 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 Yes. And we're done. Okay, so the thing here to point out is that because their, their eigenvalues are non-negative, so it is makes sense to take the log function, right? That's I really want what I really want to talk about. And yes, and this is the end for this lecture. And I'll see you guys next time.